Okay, hi, welcome back. Uh, hopefully this mic is working. Yes, it's good. Alright, so um, welcome back. So we have uh, gone on to the time equals 0 0.03. Alright, so from the last video, we are trying to see, you know, um, some function objects, uh, well, area average. So we are trying to get the wall uh, shear stress, the area average shear, shear stress. So let's go to see whether it's uh, available any of these data is available so we go to surface field value data nothing's here uh, we'll go to the 0 0.02 data okay so we do have something and you take a look here there is a uh, sh stresses shear stresses at time 0 0.03 in the x direction in the y direction and in the z direction so the z direction it, you can see it's about 1 million times bigger in order of magnitude times both of these so we can see that uh, this uh, wall shear stress is about 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3. Of course, uh, this is not a fully developed flow yet, and there will be an entrance region, etc, etc. But at least you do have something. And the negative sign tells you that uh, this uh, flow is... Uh, I mean, this, this shear stress is actually pointing downwards in the negative z direction. And... I mean, this is good because uh, the flow is actually going in the positive z direction. It's like the the flow is flowing in the positive z direction, so we we expect the shear stress to act in the opposite way. So, how do you find the average shear shear stress? I mean, very simple. Um, we can just uh, do a you know a square root kind of average, like a Pythagoras theorem kind of thing. Okay, let's let's copy this down copy and paste and you see these three values here and honestly you don't really need to care about these two values because they're so small right you only need to care about this one it's a 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 for shear stress okay 1.58 e minus 3 that's it so then what do you want to do you probably want to take a look at the, the Moody chart uh, and see what uh, the f how they calculate the friction factor okay how they calculate the friction factor uh, friction factor is uh, deal with it it will be some sort of uh, pressure drop let's see the friction factor is uh, 64 over re for laminar or else it will use this kind of uh, the colebrook equation colebrook equation so Okay, that there, there are. I don't know if there are easier ways because I, I don't feel like going for this. Okay, this one looks better. The Harland equation. Um, it's a friction factor for the uh, so full circular f uh, pipe or something like that. Or instead, can just of course look at this chart, and you just approximate the friction factor somewhere. So, what? How do you calculate this uh, friction factor anyway? Um, let's see. Engineering toolbox. Okay, engineering toolbox. Um, so you have. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can just read it off the charts and what is it? Uh, Darcy friction factor. Uh, let's see. Darcy friction factor. I can't remember what the factor is in front. Alright. They'll tell you how to calculate. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll fast forward this part so you don't have to see me looking for it. Oh, sorry. Uh, this should I should not be looking for Darcy friction factor. I should be looking for Moody friction factor, which is over here. Moody friction factor. All right. So Moody friction factor is what I'm looking for. So I'll be back. Okay. So the friction factor is as follows. You will see some uh, h value here. Okay. All right. So. Okay, it looks like I actually Moody friction factor and Darcy friction factor are basically the same thing. So it's uh, in this form. You can you see this FD here? 
um, that's the Darcy friction factor. You have your wall shear stress divided by 1 over 8 times of the rho times v squared. Okay, so yeah, let's let's uh, put this in. I'm going to save it. Uh, I'm going to save it in the k omega SST part. Okay, save this uh, drive file, Google file. Uh, no, 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 not no Google file. Uh, ODS, ODS file. Put it in the intermediate plus bits k omega SST. Oh, look, it's uh, at zero point zero four now. Okay, and what shall we call this? Uh, Darcy friction uh, calculator or something like that. So Darcy friction calc. Okay, so um, basically we'll need to give it a, a row density. Okay, uh, 1000 maybe for water. So I, I, we have a Reynolds number of about 4,000, okay? So, so we have this wash shear stress here, okay? And we have uh, average velocity, okay? And this will be in kg per meter cube, okay? Friction factor calculator, okay? Average velocity here is 0 0.4 meters per second, and uh, friction factor. Okay, F Darcy equals to tau divided by one uh, zero point one two five. That's one over eight times rho times u squared. So that's basically what it is. Uh, so this will be this will be equals to one over eight times. Uh, no, it's not yet. Uh, this I need to divide a top uh, by the bottom. So this will be in the wall shear stress bit here. This will be one over eight times rho times u squared. Okay, so it's a seven point nine times ten to the minus five. So we are not quite having a fully developed flow situation just yet. Okay. Okay, so uh, we will have this uh, sort of situation. So friction factor of 7.9, 10 to the minus 5. I'll give you a green highlight, greenish highlight. Okay, so what's the actual friction factor? Well, we, we have this calculator over here, very useful. Uh, okay. Right, so um, we have this calculator, quite useful. And it'll tell you that at a Reynolds number of about 4,000 in a pipe flow, zero relative roughness. We use this Colebrook formula to solve for the friction factor. It should be around 0 0.04. Okay. Okay, Colebrook formula. Okay, 0 0.04. So something's a little off with this uh, calculation, actually. So, you know, what, what, what could be wrong? Is it, is it that we messed up the... Um, messed up the Reynolds number or something or yeah we'll have to take a look so we'll have we have actually a pipe where, where the length is 0 0.001 if I'm not wrong so let's take a look okay. or oh, 0 0.01 yeah 0 0.01 so that's the length times the 0 .0, 0 0.4 meters per second and we divide by 1 e minus 6 so that should give you a Reynolds number of 4000 okay so the Reynolds number is about 4000 okay oh uh, let's see re 4000 okay so what what else could be wrong uh, maybe the flow is not fully developed yet because this is a you know, it's a situation for fully developed flow. So let's let's uh, take a look what this uh, flow actually looks like at the time for the time being. So uh, we'll give it let's see a slice filter. And we'll put it like this, and we want to take a look at velocity. So let's look at velocity. Right. 
at time 0 0.01 you can see the flow is hardly fully de developed okay hardly fully developed uh, the velocity profile is sort of wrong uh, I mean it's not supposed to be like this yet I mean for fully de developed flow so don't don't bank on it yet all right uh, let's see surface with edges how many points are there oh, wrong one no oh, parallel view is lagging oh no yeah anyway, surface with edges is like so yeah there are probably too many data points that Paraview has to deal with this is why oh dear okay but anyway the the velocity profile looks like this and it's not fully developed yet perhaps that's why the the friction factor is off plus you have to take into account the entrance region okay but this is uh well this is just a you know, demonstrating how to how to um get how to get uh, this friction factor uh, function object going so at least you can just do this this sort of simple comparison all right you can do this sort of simple comparison uh, so long as your mesh is right this should be uh, pretty okay you know uh, yeah probably one of the other potential issues is this uh, mesh the mesh is too coarse or yeah the mesh is too coarse Maybe that's why the, the friction factor calculations are just very off. Okay, so these are some of the things you need to take note of when you do your simulation. Okay, but at least uh, we have a working function object and that's important. Okay, so I'll stop this simulation for now. Right, there's no, no point anymore um, to do this. Okay, and yeah. So if you, you can just type in the washer stress here maybe 1.0 e minus 3 okay and what what is the washer stress that will give you this this uh, correct number it should uh, it should be giving 0 0.04 so let's increase it 2 e minus 2 maybe equals to e minus 2 yeah oh so it's not yet 2 e minus 1 all right, eight e minus one. Okay, so eight times ten to the minus one is the washer stress number to be looking for, uh, at least for this case. But uh, we'll not calculate so much for now. Um, we still want to see, you know, where whether our y plus is actually. We, we still we still want to look at some other wall functions. Okay, uh, I mean not wall functions, function objects, and some some other things as well. Alright, but that's that's all I, all I have for uh, now. At least in terms of uh, uh, function objects for area average, and um, yeah, you can actually see from this website calculator how to do this Moody friction factor calculator. You can of course use your own Excel sheet to calculate all of this out, or use the other form of the cold book equation on approximation of it. Okay, cold book equation. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Cold book equation. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, the easier one is to use this Halland's Halland equation. I don't know how to pronounce. Okay, so uh, but this this is a good good uh, easier formula to use if you are so interested. You can take a look at this. Um, yeah, but uh, this that's uh, that's for us to calculate this uh, Darcy friction factor. Mm. Okay, so mean okay. Um, yeah, basically we have. Uh, I have generated a case for you guys that in case you want to use these function objects and you know evaluate wall shear stress there should not be an issue okay so you just have to you know let let the code run and uh, it should give you the uh, ideal what do you call it it should give you the correct uh, values especially after the flow fully develops 
So I mean, there are, there are more efficient ways of doing this. You can use a shorter pipe. Uh, you can use cyclic boundary condition, blah, blah, blah. But mm, that's all I will have for now. Uh, I'll just run the all clean and put this on git. Okay, because this, this, uh, this case actually runs okay. It just takes very long. Excuse me. Yeah, it just takes pretty long to run. Okay, so uh, let's see, git status. All right. Uh, we'll close this thing. Okay, so this is the washer stress to aim for. I'm not going. I'm just uh, leaving it as an ex as an example. I'm not going to make it physically correct, or at least uh, check the thing. But you can go and do it as an exercise for yourself. See, see. Um, after the flow fully develops, what's the friction factor, etc., etc. All right. So, so all clean and. Let's see, get at, okay, let's go back. Okay, let's see. I want, yeah, this, this I'll show you in the links. Uh, I'll just quickly put this on git. Okay, then I'll cd up here, git cd intermediate, git at and git commit. So I just say that the function objects for wall shear stress have correct syntax. Okay, that's all. I'm gonna git push as well. Push. Another git process. Okay, I wonder what this is. There's no, there's no other process running. Oh, right, right, right. I see. Uh, I use the single end sign rather than a double end. I think that's that's why. Double end is to run consecutively. Single end is to run, you know, uh, one uh, in parallel. So that's not what you want. Okay, so that's that's what I. Yeah, hold on. Git status, git log one line. All right, um, let me see. Yes, okay, looks like I committed the change already. Let me let me do a git reset just to make sure I'm on the right track. Hit five two four three eight zero. All right, so. Fit bit. Yeah. yeah, looks like uh yeah. What else am I missing? I guess this should be it. There's a lot more there's there are more things to do before merging this thing back into the master branch. Or the main branch, yeah, master branch, uh, or main branch. Um, so that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, do leave a like and subscribe if you found it useful. Next time we'll probably talk more about you know uh, some other models. Okay, and of course you're gonna change, try and merge, uh, get some of these function objects into this uh, Spalot Armadas file. Okay. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye bye.